chapter 2 writing and city life mesopotamia mesopotamia is now part of the republic of iraq greek word mesos means middle and potamus means river mesopotamia is land between the euphrates and tigris rivers writing and city life or civilization began in mesopotamia mesopotamian civilization is known for one city life two writing three rich literature four mathematics five astronomy kingdoms in mesopotamia south part of mesopotamia was called sumer and akkad after 2000 bce when babylon became an important city the term babylonia was used for the southern region north part of mesopotamia was called assyria in 1100 bce assyrians established their kingdom language of the mesopotamia the first known language of mesopotamia was sumerian it was replaced by akkadian around 2400 bce flourished flourished till about alexander's time from 1400 bce aramaic similar to hebrew spoken still spoken in parts of iraq archaeological excavations in mesopotamia archaeological excavations began in the 1840s excavations continued for decades in uruk and mari archaeological sources hundreds of mesopotamian buildings statues ornaments graves tools and seals why mesopotamia was important to europeans the book of genesis of the old testament refers to shimar meaning sumer as the land of brick built cities travelers and scholars of europe looked on mesopotamia as a kind of ancestral land there was a similarity between flood story in the bible and stories in mesopotamian tradition noha was the principal character in flood story in the bible in mesopotamian tradition the principal character was siyasudra or utnapistim in 1873 a british newspaper funded an expedition of the british museum to search for a tablet narrating the story of the flood mentioned in the bible by the 1960s it was understood that the stories of the old testament were not literally true but may have been ways of expressing memories about important changes in history mesopotamia and its geography northeast green plains tree covered mountain ranges clear streams and wild flowers with enough rainfall agriculture began between 7000 and 6000 bce north steppe animal herding east tributaries of the tigris used for communication south deserts cities and writing emerged here
Influence of Geography on Prosperity of Mesopotamia Rivers Euphrates and Tigris carry loads of silt. When rivers flood, fertile silt is deposited. After the Euphrates has entered the desert, its water flows out into small channels. These channels flood their banks and functioned as irrigation canals. Water could be let into the fields of wheat, barley, peas or lentil when necessary. Mesopotamian sheep and goats that grazed on the steppe, the northeastern plains and the mountain slopes. These animals produced meat, milk, wool in abundance. Fish was available in rivers. Date, play, date palms gave fruit in summer. Mesopotamian Civilization and Bronze Age The earliest cities in Mesopotamia date back to the Bronze Age 3000 BCE. Bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. Bronze procured from great distances. Metal tools and weapons were made by bronze. Significance of Urbanism Urban economies comprises besides food production, trade, manufactures and services. City people depend on the products or services of other people. There is continuous interaction among them. The division of labor is a mark of urban life. There must be a social organization in place. Urban economies often require the keeping of rec written records. Movement of goods into cities Ancient Mesopotamians traded their abundant textiles and agricultural produce. They imported wood, copper, tin, silver, gold, shell and various stones from Turkey and Iran or across the Gulf. River boats are propelled by the current of the river and or wind. When animals transport goods, they need to be fed. The canals and natural channels of ancient Mesopotamia were routes of goods and transport. The development of writing Cuneiform writing Mesopotamian script is known as cuneiform script. Cuneiform is derived, derived from the Latin words cunus means wedge and forma meaning shape. Cuneiform means wedge shaped. By 2600 BC or so, the letters became cuneiform and the language was Sumerian. Sumerian was replaced after 2400 BCE by the Akkadian language. Cuneiform writing in the Akkadian language continued in use until the first century CE, more than 2000 years. Clay Tablets of Mesopotamia The first Mesopotamian tablets written around 3200 BCE. It contained picture-like signs and numbers. These were about 5,000 lists, lists of oxen, fish, bread, loaves, etc. These were brought into or distributed from the temples of Uruk, a city in the south. Mesopotamians wrote on tablets of clay. A scribe would wet clay and pat it into a size 
he could hold comfortably in one hand he would carefully smoothen its surfaces with the sharp end of the reed he would press wedge shaped signs on to the smoothened surface while it was still moist once dried in the sun the clay would harden each transaction required a separate lid each transaction required a separate written tablet uses of writing in mesopotamia keeping records making dictionaries giving legal validity to land transfers narrating the deeds of kings announcing the changes in the laws sumerian epic poem about enmerkar enmerkar was one of the earliest rulers of uruk the connection between city life trade and writing is brought out in a epic poem enmerkar is associated with the organization of the first trade of sumer enmerkar wanted lapis lazuli and precious metals for the beautification of a city temple he sent his messenger out to get them from the chief of arata the messenger had to go up into the mountain ranges five mountain ranges six mountain ranges seven mountain ranges he crossed he got all the messages mix, mixed up then enmerkar formed a clay tablet in his hand and he wrote the words down in those days there had been no writing down of words on clay the ruler of arata examined the clay and his face uses of writing as per epic poem about enmerkar it was kingship that organized trade and writing writing was writing as storing information sending messages afar sign of the superiority of mesopotamian urban culture the system of writing the sound that cuneiform sign represented was not a single consonant or vowel but syllables mesopotamian scribe had to learn hundreds of signs writing was skilled craft and intellectual achievement literacy in mesopotamia very few mesopotamians could read and write if a king could read he made sure that this was recorded in one of his inscription inscriptions urbanization of southern mesopotamia temples and kings three kinds of cities in mesopotamia one cities developed around temples example uruk two cities developed as centers of trade example ur three imperial cities example mari mesopotamian cities uruk ur mari ninave nippur lagash role of temples in mesopotamia from 5000 bce settlements had begun to develop in southern mesopotamia the earliest known temple was a small shrine made of unbaked bricks temples were the residence of various gods later temples became larger with several rooms around open courtyards the god was the focus of worship people brought grain curd and fish to the temple the god was also the theoretical owner of the agricultural fields the fisheries and the herds of the local community oil pressing grinding spinning 
and the weaving of woolen cloth also done in the temple temple was organizer of production temple was employer of merchants temple was keeper of written records of distributions and allotments the temple gradually developed its activities and became the main urban institution gods of mesopotamia god of ur moon god the goddess of love and war inanna god of the steppe dagon why mesopotamian countryside engaged in repeated conflict one those who lived on the upstream of the channel of euphrates could divert water into their fields that villages downstream were left without water to those who lived in the upstream could neglect to clean out the silt from their stretch of the channel blocking the flow of water further down how king get high status power and the authority when there was continuous warfare in a region those chiefs who had been successful in war could oblige their followers by distributing the loot chiefs could take prisoners from the defeated groups to employ as their servants in time victorious chiefs began to offer precious booty to the gods and thus beautify the community's temples this gave the king high status and power life in the city marriage and family in mesopotamian society the nuclear family was the norm a married son and his family often resided with his parents the father was the head of the family a declaration was made about the willingness to marry by the bride's parents then a gift was given by the groom's people to the bride's people when the wedding took place gifts were exchanged by both parties who ate together and made offerings in a temple when her mother-in-law came to fetch her the bride was given her share of the inheritance by her father the father's house herds fields etc were inherited by the sons mesopotamian seal in mesopotamia cylindrical stone seals used seals were made of stone copper bronze gold ivory or bone cylindrical seals rolled over wet clay so that a continuous picture was created they were carved by skilled craftsmen seals carry writing the name of the owner his god his po- official position etc a seal could be rolled on clay covering the string knot of the cloth package or the mouth of a pot uruk mesopotamian city uruk was the earliest city in ancient mesopotamia it is considered the first true city in the world The city of Uruk is most famous for its great king Gilgamesh. It was a temple town. We find depictions of armored heroes and their victims in Uruk. Around 3000 BCE, Uruk grew to the enormous extent of 250 hectares, twice as large as Mohenjo-daro. Uruk also came to have a defensive wall at the very early date. The site was continuously occupied from about 4000 to 40 CE. By about 2800 BC it had expanded to 400 hectares. War captives and local people were put to work for the temple. or directly for the ruler 
ദോസ് ഹു വെയർ പുട്ട് ടു വർക്ക് വെയർ പെയ്ഡ് റേഷൻസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ്സ് ഓഫ് റേഷൻ ലിസ്റ്റ് ഹാവ് ബീൻ ഫൗണ്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ബീൻ എസ്റ്റിമേറ്റഡ് ദാറ്റ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ടെമ്പിൾസ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫൈവ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് മെൻ വർക്കിംഗ് ടെൻ അവേഴ്സ് എ ഡേ ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ടു ബിൽഡ് ദർ വെയർ ഓൾസോ ടെക്നിക്കൽ അഡ്വാൻസസ് അറ്റ് ഉറൂക്ക് അറൌണ്ട് ത്രീ തൗസൻഡ് ബി സി ബ്രോൺസ് ടൂൾസ് കെയിം ടു യൂസ് ഫോർ വേരിയസ് ക്രാഫ്റ്റ്സ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട്സ് ലേൺ ടു കൺസ്ട്രക്ട് ബ്രിക് കോളംസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ്സ് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ വെയർ പുട്ട് ടു വർക്ക് അറ്റ് മേക്കിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ബേക്കിംഗ് ക്ലേ കോൺസ് ക്ലേ കോൺസ് പുഷ്ഡ് ഇൻ ടു ടെമ്പിൾ വോൾസ് പെയിൻറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് കളേഴ്സ് ക്രിയേറ്റിംഗ് എ കളർഫുൾ മൊസൈക്ക് ഇൻ സ്കൾപ്ചർ ദർ വെയർ സൂപ്പർബ് അച്ചീവ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ദ പോർട്ടേഴ്സ് വീൽ ഇൻവെൻറ്റഡ് ദ വീൽ എനേബിൾഡ് എ പോർട്ടേഴ്സ് വർക്ക് ഷോപ്പ് ടു മാസ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ഡസൻസ് ഓഫ് സിമിലർ പോസ്റ്റ് പോർട്ട്സ് അറ്റ് എ ടൈം ഉർ മെസബോട്ടോമിയൻ സിറ്റി ഉർ വാസ് എ ടൗൺ ഹൂസ് ഓർഡിനറി ഹൗസസ് വെയർ സിസ്റ്റമാറ്റിക്കലി എക്സ്കവേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ദ നയൻറ്റീൻ തേർട്ടീസ് നാരോ സ്ട്രീറ്റ്സ് വീൽഡ് കോഡ്സ് could not reach the houses sacks of grain and firewood would have arrived on do- donkey back donkey back irregular shapes of house plots absence of town planning there were no street drains drains and clay pipes were found in the inner courtyards houses house roofs sloped inwards and rainwater was channeled by the drain pipes into sums in the inner courtyards people swept all their household waste into the streets and this made street levels rise light came into the rooms not from windows but from doorways opening onto the courtyards this would also have given families their privacy there were superstitions about houses recorded in omen tablets at ur a raised threshold brought wealth a friend door that did not open towards another house was lucky if the main wooden door of a house opened outwards instead of inwards the wife would be a torment to her husband there was a town cemetery at ur a few individuals were found buried under the floors of ordinary houses mari mesopotamian city a trading town in a pastoral zone mari a trading town in a pastoral zone mari was royal capital town after 2000 bc mari flourished mari stands upstream of on the euphrates agriculture and animal rearing were main occupation herders needs to exchange young animals cheese leather and meat in return for grain metal tools etc nomadic communities of western desert filtered into prosperous agricultural heartland this made conflicts between them shepherds would bring their flocks into the zone area of the zone area in the summer such groups would come in as herders harvest laborers or hired soldiers occasionally became prosperous and settled down a few gained the power to establish their rule these included the akkadians amorites assyrians and arameans kings of mari were amorites amorites dress different from that of the original inhabitants amorites respected the gods of mesopotamia Amorites raised a temple at Mari for Dagon, god of Stepi. Mesopotamian society and culture were thus open to different people and cultures. The kings of Mari, however, had to be vigilant. Herders of various tribes were allowed to move in the kingdom 
but they were watched located in the euphrates in a prime position for trade in wood copper tin oil wine and various other goods they traded with turkey syria and lebanon mary is a good example for urban center prospering on trade boats carrying grinding stones wood and wine and oil jars would stop at mary on their way to the southern cities offices of this town would go abroad would go aboard inspect the cargo collect tax most important tablets refers to copper from alesia the island of cyprus thus although the kingdom of mary was not a military militarily strong it was exceptionally prosperous palace at mary of king zimrlim the great palace of mary was the residence of the royal family palace was the center of administration it was place of production especially of precious metal ornaments it was so famous in its time that a minor king came from north syria just to see it carrying with him a letter of introduction from a royal friend of the king of mary simrlim daily lists reveal that huge quantities of food were presented each day for the king's table flour bread meat fish fruits beer and wine he probably ate the company of many others the palace had only one entrance on the north the king would have received foreign dignitaries and his own people in 232 a room with wall paintings that would have awed the visitors the palace was a sprawling structure with 260 rooms and covered an area of 2.4 hectares cities in mesopotamian culture epic of gilgamesh mesopotamians valued city life after cities were destroyed in war they recalled them in poetry gilgamesh epic was written on 12 tablets gilgamesh is said to have ruled the city of uruk some time after enmerkar he got a shock when his heroic friend died he then set out to find the secret of immortality crossing the waters that surround the world after a heroic attempt gilgamesh failed and returned to uruk there he consoled himself by walking along the city wall back and forth he admired the foundations made of fired bricks that he had put into place it is the city wall of uruk that the long tale of heroism and endeavor fizzles out gilgamesh does not say that even though he will die his sons will outlive him as a tribal hero would have done he take consolation in the city that his people had built the legacy of writing contribution of contributions of mesopotamia first writing first city life mathematics and astronomy multiplication division division tables square and square root tables and tables of compound interest the division of the year into 12 months according to the revolution of the moon around the earth the division of month into 4 weeks the day into 24 hours hour into 60 minutes solar and lunar eclipses were observed their occurrence was noted according to year month and day observed positions of stars and constellations in the night sky none of these momentous mesopotamian achievements would have been possible 
without writing and urban institutions of schools time divisions were adopted by successors of alexander and from there trans- transmitted to the roman world then to the world of islam and then the medieval europe early attempts to locate and preserve the texts and traditions of the past in mesopotamia one asar banipal early library to nebonidas steel carved image recovery repairing of broken image of king sagan asar banipal of assyria an early library in the iron age the assyrians of north created an empire asar banipal was the last assyrian king nineveh was his capital asar banipal collected a library at nineveh he made great effort to gather tablets on history epics amun literature astrology hymns and poems asar banipal's library had a total sum of 1000 texts amounting to about 30000 tablets grouped according to the subject nebonidas of babylonia an early archaeologist nepopolassar released babylonia from assyrian domination in 625 bce nebonidas was the last ruler of independent babylon he writes that god of ur came to him in a dream and ordered him to appoint a priestess to take charge of the, of the cult he writes he doesn't know characteristic features of priestess then he says he found a stele of a very early king whom we today date to about 1150 bc and so on that stele the carved image of a priestess he observed the clothing and jewelry that was depicted this is how he was able to dress his daughter for her cons- consecration as priestess on the another occasion nebonidas men brought to him a broken statue inscribed with the name of sargon king of akkad ruled around 2370 bce nebonidas repaired the statue nebonidas wrote i summoned skilled craftsmen 